ओके हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू फ्री क्रैश कोर्स फॉर कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स हेल्ड बाय विराट हिंदुस्तान संगम इन एसोसिएशन विद मैनिफेस्ट आई एस बेंगलुरु सो दिस प्रोग्राम इज इंस्पायर्ड बाय डॉक्टर सुब्रमण्य स्वामी एंड इट वाज इनोग्रेटेड ऑन ट्वेंटी एट ऑफ जनवरी सो दिस प्रोग्राम इज कन्वीन बाई डॉक्टर रविशंकर सर स्टेट एजुकेशन कन्वीनर वी एच एस कर्नाटका एंड प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ गुड नेबर्स NGO. So I am the chief mentor of your program. Here is my name, Danush Kumar. So I have been training civil service aspirants for past five years. Okay, this program is completely held online, and you can watch this program on YouTube channel of Virat Hindustan Sangam. Here is the link, and also YouTube channel of Udya News Karnataka. Here is the link. Okay, so. Here is a timetable for of your program along with syllabus. So we have started with polity. It's going to run for another four to five days, and then we are going to progress to history. So you for free mentoring, you have to join our Telegram channel. Here is a link for our channel, and you can also join by uh, scanning the QR code. So you can also by typing this link. So you can also search for VHS Education Forum on Telegram. Okay, so what to expect out of these classes? I have been telling, it can be used as a revision course as well as to get a gist of gist and hold of the concepts of various topics which you are going to study for various competitive exams. Right. So today I am going to start with. Okay, so today we are going to start with the state government. State government comes under which part? Comes under part 4 of the constitution so state government comes under part 4 sorry part 6 part 4 is which part 4 is what part 4 is your directive principles of state policy what is part 4a part 4a is your fundamental duties part 6 is your state government okay what are the constitutional provisions constitutional provisions okay so it is uh, the entire state government comes under the part 6 of the constitution so first we are going to start with the concept of or the office of governor so it is a most important office when it comes to the state government okay what are the articles which are going to deal with governor it is starting from article 153 goes up to article 167 under part 6 of the constitution okay so there is no office of vice governor so governor is similar to what governor is similar to the office of president at the center however like vice president there is no office of vice governor okay so the first concept is appointment of governor so how the governor is appointed governor is not elected rather governor is appointed who appoints the governor it is the president of india who appoints the governor he is a nominee of the central government he is a agent of the central government that is why whenever prime minister comes to uh, any state governor goes to receive him so it is a uh, protocol protocol to receive the prime minister because he is the agent or nominee of the central government okay so draft constitution so the draft who drafted by dr b r ambedkar it provided for direct election of the office of governor however later on the it was removed direct so there are various disadvantages of having a office of uh, having the direct election of office of governor what are the disadvantages so here is it is incompatible with parliamentary system of democracy because you elect a governor you also elect a chief minister so there will be a tussle tussle between whom tussle between cm and governor because both are elected so What, what they did, what the Constitutional Assembly did, they made the office of governor a appointed office. 
However, chief minister is elected. Okay. Next. So, uh, having an elected uh, governor is also against uh, uh, having this kind of system. That is the appointment system enables the center to have a control over the state affairs. So, that is having the central control of uh, control of center over the state affairs can be enabled by by office of governor. That is why you see many uh, bills uh, and many acts would be reserved by the governor for the consent of the president. Okay. So, these are the disadvantages of having a direct office of governor. That is elected office of governor. So, what are the conditions for having a governor's office? So, the first condition is he should be a citizen of India. So, he should be a citizen of India. Second condition is he should be a having he should have completed 35 years of age. Just like the office of president, the office of governor, the person should have completed 35 years of age. So, there are other conditions also. So, he should not be a member of house of parliament or state legislature. He should not be a member of Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha or state legislature. And he should, he should not hold office of profit. You already know what is office of profit. So, he can use the Raj Bhavan. Raj Bhavan is similar to your Rashtrapati Bhavan at the center. So he can use it without paying any rent. So, he, uh, there are various instances where the same person is appointed a governor of two or more states or a state and a union territory. Okay. So, the, what is the oath which the governor takes before uh, assuming the office? What is the oath? So, the oath is to faithfully execute the office. That is the first oath. So, next oath is to preserve, protect and defend the constitution and law. To defend the constitution is the second oath. And the third oath is to devote himself to the service and well-being of the people of India. Like the president, he should also de uh, devote himself to the service of the people of India. So, next comes the concept of term of term of governor's office. So, general term is 5 years. So, the office of governor has a term of 5 years upon entering his office. If he enters, if she or she enters an office, that is the office of governor, he can hold it for 5 years. Okay, next is powers and functions. What are the powers and functions of the office of governor. So, before that, uh, there is a, yeah, so we have seen how the vice president is removed, how the president is impeached. However, how does the governor is removed? How, how does the governor removed from the office? So, the constitution does not specify any specific condition for removal of office of governor. For the office of governor, there is no specific condition for removal. So, how he is removed? So, he is removed at the will of the central government. You see, whenever a government changes, there is a, either a transfer of the governors or removal of governors. So, whenever central government changes, this is happening. That is why the Sarkaria Commission and Panchi Commission has given various recommendations to make the office of governor a non-political body. Okay. Next comes the uh, concept of powers and functions. What are the powers and functions of the office of governor? So, the first function is, first power is executive powers. What are the executive powers? All the executive actions of the state government is taken under his name. He is the nominal authority, whereas the real authority is the chief minister. So, that is the first executive, uh, executive power. Next executive power is, he can make rules. He can make rules about the... Uh, so, uh, how the... Uh, specifying the manner in which the orders and other instruments are executed. Various orders are given by the government, by the state government. He can make rules about... How those orders are, orders are executed. Next is, 
he appoints the chief minister and other ministers they hold office during his pleasure so this is similar to the office of president next is he appoints the advocate general upon the ad ad advice of the chief minister and council of ministers okay next is state state election commissioner so state election commissioner is appointed by the office of governor so he appoints the members of state public service commission so state public service commission members are appointed by governor who removes them who has the power to remove them it is the president okay these are certain executive functions of the executive powers of the governor what are the legislative powers whatever act passed by the state legislative assembly and council it is signed by it gets enforced only after the governor uh, signs it so he can summon and prorogue the state legislative assembly you know already what is summoning and proroguing i have discussed it in the chapter of parliament next is so he addresses the state legislative assembly at the beginning of the first session and also every year first session of the year so now budget session is going to happen uh, so the governor is going to address the sessions so he can send the messages we can send messages to the houses of the state legislature we can appoint any minister of the state legislative assembly sorry he can appoint any member of the state legislative assembly as a speaker when both the speaker and deputy speaker offices uh, lie vacant next is he nominates 1/6 1/6 of the members of state legislative council so state legislative council is similar to rajya sabha only six states have it today okay so uh, in the state legislative council one sixth of the members are nominated by whom nominated by the governor so those are the persons who have expertise in literature science art and cooperative movement so in the rajya sabha it is 12 members who are nominated by whom president here one sixth of the members so he decides the on the disqualification of the members of the state legislative assembly so on whose advice on the advice of election commission so when a bill is presented to him when a bill is presented to him he can give his assent he can withhold give his assent means sign is sign the bill withhold the assent does not sign the bill or return the bill return the bill to the assembly or one more provision is there he can reserve the bill for the consent of the president this this provision is not similar to the uh, office of president so a president cannot reserve the bill for some others consent he has to sign it or send it back or withhold it whereas governor has the option of sending the bill back to the uh, sending the bill uh, not back sending the bill uh, to the consent of the president that is Uh, one uh, one special provision with respect to office of governor so when does he reserve the bill for the reserve the bill for the pre president's consent when when the provision provisions or a law when a law is against the constitution when the law is ultra vires when it is against the constitution when the law is against directive principles of state policy so when when the law is against the larger interest of country so in those conditions he can reserve the bill for presidential consent next comes the financial powers so financial powers you know majorly it is regard with respect to budget and money bill so he sees the annual financial statement is laid before the state legislature that is the budget gets laid before the state legislature with the consent of the governor next is money bill money bill even it, uh, it is same to, uh, with respect to the state legislature compared to the parliament money bill gets laid be before the state legislature only upon his prior recommendation so no demand for grant you know what is demand for grant it cannot no demand for grant can be made without his recommendation next is he can make advances out of the consolidated fund of india you know what is consolidated fund sorry he can make advances out of consolidated fund of state there is 
similar to consolidated fund of india we have consolidated fund of state he can make advances make advances means take money out of the consolidated fund of the state so e constitutes finance commission so just like the central finance commission we have state finance commission e constitutes the finance commission so what are the judicial powers judicial powers so just like the president even the governor has judicial powers he can grant pardons reprieves respites remission you already know what is pardon respite remission and uh, also reprieve in all the cases when the where the executive power of the state extends to if the offence is against the state bill state list state list uh, state list provisions then he can grant pardon reprieve respite and commutation and also remission so he is consulted by the president while appointing judges of the concerned high court suppose karnataka high court judges are being appointed the president consults whom the governor next is he makes appoints appointments to the uh, district judges so you have every district one district judge district judge is there similar to sessions judge at the uh, sorry similar to civil court or sessions judge at the where at the uh, city level so district judge is appointed by him in consultation with whom state high court so judicial service of the state so there is a judicial service just like uh, all uh, just like state public service there is state judicial service so the appointment to that service is made by the governor in consultation with whom high court and state public service commission both so next comes the concept of uh comparing the veto ordinance and pardoning powers of the governor with the president so what is the comparison with regard to ordinary bills so president what can he do he may assent he may send the bill back or he may withhold the consent whereas here he can do the same things governor can do the same things plus reserve the bill for presidential assent that is the first difference so when the state bill is reserved by the governor uh, so president when the state bill is uh, comes to the president what he can do he can assent withhold or return whereas governor doesn't have any such provision when it regard to money bills uh, the president what can he do he can give his assent or withhold his assent so here even money bill what the governor can do give the assent withhold the assent reserve the bill for president but not return even both of them cannot return okay so money bill when it comes to president what he can do he can give give his assent or withhold his assent even the president cannot return the money bill of the state so these are the differences between ordinary bill and money bill so next we will compare the ordinance making power so now we spoke about the veto power veto power we will now speak about the ordinance power what are the ordinance power so president can promulgate an ordinance when both the houses of the parliament are not in session even if one house in session if the president promulgates an ordinance it is promulgating an ordinance what did, what does it mean i have explained so even uh, if even if one house is in session if the president promulgates an ordinance it is ultra wise it is against the constitution however governor can promulgate an ordinance only when only when the state legislative assembly uh, is not in session when wherever the state see there are two kinds so with when it comes to state legislature there are two types of constitutional setup in one type of constitutional setup there are only legislative assemblies for example the state of tamil nadu the state of odisha the state of rajasthan they just have likewise they just have what state just the legislative assembly whereas there are certain states where they have legislative assembly plus legislative council so it is it acts as the upper house at the state level only few states have why only few states it is 
British legacy. British during their times introduced uh, pro at the provincial level. Provinces means similar to states today. At the provincial level, uh, bicameral registrature. Bi bicameral, bicameral means what? Upper house and lower house. So, British introduced only in few provinces. So, we have in the states of Karnataka, we have in the states of Maharashtra, we have in the states of UP, what? We have uh, bicameral, bicameral legislature, that is legislative assembly and legislative council. Hope the concept is clear. So, in the case, in, in the first case, he can promulgate an ordinance when legislative assembly is not in session. In the second case, he can promulgate an ordinance when both of them are not in session. Okay. So, uh, next is, uh, uh, his ordinance making power, president's ordinance making power extends only to state union list, governors only to state list. So, uh, it has, uh, president, it has the same uh, presidential ordinance, same effect as an act of our parliament, governor's ordinance, same effect as a uh, as the state government act. So, next is, uh, both of them can withdraw the ordinance at any time. Likewise, there are many differences with respect to ordinance making power. You can go look into the book. It is very easy. Next is, pardoning power uh, comparison. Pardoning power. So, president can pa give, give pardon, when he, uh, pardon, reprieve, respect, all, the, the, all those things with respect to central law. Governor, state law. So, uh, uh, with respect to death sentence, only the president can pardon. Even if the state law prescribes, state law prescribes death sentence, who can pardon? Only the president. Governor cannot pardon a death sentence at all. However, death sentence he can commute, reprieve, respite, everything he can do with respect to death sentence. But he cannot pardon the death sentence. So, that is why the issue of Rajiv Gandhi killers, Nalini and Co. So, Nalini and Co, the issue has come up again and again because they are saying the state governor can grant pardon. However, the central government has said, no, nothing doing. State governor cannot do. It is only the prerogative of the president. That is why they are still in jail. Okay. So, military court, military court, military trial, I already told martial law, military courts. So, military personnel, they are court martialed. That is, they are not subject to normal ordinary courts. So, those personnel, uh, they are tried by the court martialing and they can be granted pardon, reprieve, respect only by the president. However, governor cannot get into the field of uh, court martialing. So, constitutional position of governor. What is the constitutional position? So, since the Parliament of India provides a what form of government? They provide a parliamentary, sorry, since the Constitution of India provides a parliamentary form of government, right? In the parliamentary form of government, there are two authorities. One is de facto authority, another is de jure authority. So, de facto, who? Chief Minister, Prime Minister. De jure, President, Governor. Okay. So, what is the constitutional provision? So, Article 154. So, Article 154 speaks about the office of Governor. Which article speaks about the office of President? It is Article 53. So, 154 article speaks about the office of Governor. So, similar to Article 74, Article 163 is there. Article 163, what does it say? It says, aid and advice. So, the, there shall be a council of ministers who are there to aid and advise the governor. Okay. Article 164. What does 164 say? Article 164. So, it is, it says, with respect to council of ministers shall be collectively responsible to state legislative assembly. That is similar to central government being responsible to Lok Sabha, state government being responsible to legislative assembly. That is said by whom? It is said by Article 164. Okay. So, there is one uh, uh, special power of the governor compared to the president. See, when it comes to president, 
वॉट एवर द प्रेसिडेंट हेज टू डू ही हेज टू डू विथ द एड एंड एडवाइज ऑफ द काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर सेंट्रल काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स राइट बट इन सर्टन केसेस दट इज रिटर्निंग द बिल विथ होल्डिंग द कंसल्ट देर ही कैन एक्सरसाइज इज डिस्क्रिप्शन राइट ओनली लिमिटेड डिस्क्रिप्शन हाउ एवर द डिस्क्रिप्शनरी पवर ऑफ ऑफिस ऑफ गवर्नर इज हाइयर कंपेर्ड टू ऑफिस ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट सो द डिस्क्रिप्शनरी पवर इज लार्जर वास्ट कंपेर्ड टू ऑफिस ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट सो वॉट इज द डिस्क्रिप्शनरी पवर ऑफ गवर्नर सो so reservation of a bill for consideration of suppose a bill comes to the governor he can reserve the bill for president no he can he need not ask anybody okay that is his first discretionary power with respect to imposition of president rule which article article 356 he can act out of discretion he need not ask anybody okay so and also with respect to special states that is the state of assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram there payments are made to this government that is tribal district council tribal district council so these states amtm assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram amtm states so these are what states six scheduled states so with respect to six scheduled states if the payments are made he need not as take the permission of state council of ministers these are the discretionary powers okay so and also he has certain situational discretion so what i said earlier was constitutional discretion discretion given in the constitution however there are also situational discretion based on the situation in what situation appointment of a chief minister when there is no clear cut majority when there is a hung assembly he can appoint a chief minister at his discretion that is why in the karnataka government even though the coalition politics uh, 2009 after 2018 election even though the congress and the jds tried to form a coalition the since there was hung assembly the governor wajubai rudabai wala ji appointed whom appointed shri bs edurappa in the first instance however unfortunately uh, edurappa sir could not prove majority so he resigned after 13 days okay okay these are certain and also dismissal of council of ministers when they don't when they lose the majority there he has the constitutional discretion next is articles with respect to governor what are the articles so the important articles are article 153 it speaks of governor of state article 163 153 163 and 164 these are the articles important with respect to office of governor also you can take down article 200 article 200 what does it speak it speak of assent to bills next article 2 more than article 200 you can uh, strike down article 200 article 201 is important what does 201 speaks about article 201 speaks about reservation of bill by the governor for presidential assent okay so this is with respect to the office of governor next we are going to move to the most important office at the state level that is the office of chief minister it is the de facto office de facto office at the state level so what are the okay how does a chief minister appointed so chief minister according to article 163 is appointed by the governor he is appointed by the governor and he holds an office at the pleasure of the governor so this doctrine of pleasure is important pleasure doesn't mean own whims and fancies rather it means rather it means what pleasure means so as long as the chief minister holds majority the governor cannot touch him only when he loses majority the uh uh discretion of the governor comes into place okay so uh 
the governor can exercise his uh, exercise his discretion in appointing the chief minister when the chief minister in office dies suddenly there is and there is no obvious successor in that condition and also in the condition of ang assembly when there is no single party who has a clear majority and there is no coalition party also then he can exercise his discretion right okay next comes the concept of oath and term what is the oath so the oath of chief minister goes like this to bear true faith and allegiance to the constitution of india next oath is to uphold the sovereignty and integrity of india sovereignty and integrity next is to faithfully discharge his office and last is to do right without favor and uh, without fear or favor to do right in a manner without fear or favor or affection or ill will okay this is the oath so the term of chief minister so in a, in addition to this oath there is a oath of secrecy so even the central council of ministers prime minister the chief minister and also the state council of ministers adhere to uh, adhere to what they adhere to a oath of secrecy what does it what is the oath of secrecy it is a colonial legacy it speaks of so the chief minister swears that he will not directly or indirectly communicate or reveal to any person any matter that is brought before him and becomes known to him in in his capacity as a minister so that is the oath of secrecy he should keeps the he should keep the daily proceedings of the office uh, office which he is discharging uh, a secret so it should not be divulged so that is the office of oath of secrecy okay the the term of chief minister is however not fixed like the office of governor where the term is fixed as 5 years there is no fixed term for the office of governor why he holds the office during the pleasure during the doc pleasure of the governor so the pleasure means having majority in the assembly so what is the power and functions of the chief minister what are the powers and functions of the chief minister okay in relation to council of ministers what is com means council of ministers in in relation to council of ministers what power does the governor holds sorry what power does the chief minister holds okay so the chief minister recommends to the governor who can be appointed as a council of minister so only chief minister can recommend sir that this person can be uh, made a home minister this person can be made a finance minister another person can be made a water minister irrigation minister and so on so it is the prerogative of the chief minister next is he allocates the portfolios portfolio means what departments that is home department finance department agriculture department fisheries department technology department so on so he can advise he can ask a minister to resign when the chief minister is dissatisfied with the performance of a minister can ask him or her to resign so he presides over the meeting of council of ministers so and also he brings about the collapse of council of ministers by resigning that is what that what does that mean so in so we have a council of minister at state right so when the chief minister resigns when the chief minister steps down when the chief minister steps down entire council of minister steps down they need not individually go and submit their resignation to the governor okay next is what is the relationship of the chief minister with respect to the office of governor so so he is the principal channel of communication between whom between council of ministers and the governor the bridge the bridge is formed by cm okay so he furnishes all information with respect to the functioning of council of ministers so he the chief minister advises the appoint uh, to the governor with respect to the appointment of important officers like chairman 
chairman and members of state planning commission and election commission okay next is the concept of uh, relation of chief minister with state legislature so he is the head of the legislative assembly right so with respect to state legislature he is the leader of the house not the head of the assembly the term is leader of the house he is the leader of the house okay so he advises the governor with respect to summoning and proroguing of the legislative assembly state legislature summoning bringing uh, that is starting a session ending a session who advises to the governor it is the chief minister next is he can recommend the dissolution of state legislative assembly so in karnataka legislative assembly has 224 members so if the entire assembly has to be dissolved ended the chief minister can go and ask the governor to dissolve okay there are certain other functions also he the chief minister is the chairman of state planning commission similar to central planning commission which is niti ayog now he is a member of inter interstate council he is a chief spokesperson of state government so he is the chief spokesperson of the state okay state government so he is the political head of the services all your ias ips everybody comes under the rule of chief minister okay so next is what is his relationship with the governor relationship of the uh, of the chief minister with the governor which article speaks there are three articles you know 163 that is aid and advice 164 that is collective responsibility of the council of ministers so you know what is collective responsibility collectively the all the all the council of ministers are collectively together they are responsible responsible means what they must be answerable they must be answerable to the state legislature that is legislative assembly if they lose their majority they have to resign okay so 163 164 one 164 speaks of appointment of chief minister and other ministers and also the doctrine of pleasure and also the concept of collective responsibility so there is one more article article 167 what does 167 say similar to article 78 so in 167 Uh, uh, the chief minister communicates to the governor all the decisions of the council of minister all the decisions of the councils of ministers who uh, who communicates it is the chief minister so what are the important articles when it comes to chief minister so it is article 163 164 and 167 these three articles are important text is the topic of state council of ministers similar to the central council of ministers so why state council of ministers because we have follow a parliamentary form of government even at the state level similar to the central level so which are the articles which deals with the state council of ministers majorly it is article 163 similar to cm and article 164 which is also similar to the cm okay so what are the constitutional provisions article 163 so the council of ministers aid and advise so there shall be a council of ministers uh, who aid and advise to the governor that is the first provision of article 163 very very important so uh, the governor has to follow the aid and advise except except when where he has to act out of discretion i already discussed what is discretion that is own will he need not ask the permission or he need not depend on the aid and advice of the council of ministers he can uh, take a action on his own will okay so when the, uh, this uh, the uh, governor Uh, can act in discretion at times that is also given in article 163 so the article 163 also speaks about 
the advice so i already said aid and advice is given by council of ministers to whom governor that cannot be inquired by whom the courts any court cannot inquire next article 164 so chief minister and other ministers are appointed by whom governor and they hold office during the pleasure so during the pleasure of the governor right okay so here one concept is important uh, in certain states state of chatisgar jharkhand madhya pradesh and odisha in these four states chatisgar madhya pradesh chatisgar so these were one were one state at one point of time bihar and jharkhand in in these states uh, in these states there should be a tribal welfare minister so that is also given in the constitution by an amendment in 2006 amendment number not important so 164 also speaks about 164 also speaks about the council of ministers the council of ministers does not exceed 15% so similar to the central level 15% of the state legislative assembly right so karnataka has 224 ministers 15% is 50, 224 mlas so 15% is how much 10% is 22 22 plus uh, 11 approximately uh, 34 okay so not more than 34 ministers can be there in karnataka legislative assembly right okay so also it speaks about so uh, 164 also speaks about defection defection you already know it happens at state level 164 the person is debarred from holding a post of minister if a person is debarred on defection as an mla he is also debarred from holding the post of minister okay next is the concept of the ministers hold during office during pleasure of governor that is one thing and the last concept is uh, holding the office during the uh, i mean uh, the council of ministers are collectively responsible to state legislature collective responsibility you already know council of ministers are collectively responsible to state legislature next is article 166 what does it speak it speaks of conduct of business of government of state so here conduct of business how the A state government is conducted how the administrative machinery is run on a day to day basis so uh, the first provision is all the executive action of the government is taken in whose name in the name of governor orders and instruments are signed by the whom governor in the way he prescribes that is the second provision so we, it, while signing the orders and instruments the governor makes specific rules as to how the order and sign order and instruments are signed okay order and instruments it is a uh, order of the state government or instrument means it might be a law so the governor says in this particular way only i am going to uh, sign he makes the rules how, about how the orders and instruments are signed okay next is article 167 what does 167 speaks about i already told to communicate to the governor all the decisions of the council of ministers article 167 177 what does it speak not very important so uh, it it says uh, it speaks about the rights of ministers as a as respects the houses sorry so every minister has a right to speak so right of minister with respect to the houses every minister has a right to speak in the house that is the under article 177 so nature of advice by minister what is the nature of advice so article 163 speaks of what council of ministers aid and advice right so uh, in 1971 so this this advice so aid and advice whatever the whatever the aid and advice given by the council of ministers it cannot be questioned by any court court cannot go into what advice the council of ministers are giving to the governor so that is very very important 
so nature of advice is court is courts are debarred so next is concept of appointment of ministers appointment of ministers so when it comes to nature of advice there are two areas one so when the governor is bound by aid and advice governor is bound by aid and advice in next next is governor can act out of discretion these are the two dimensions right okay so and the advice is not inquirable by court appointment of ministers so chief upon the advice of the chief minister the government governor appoints the ministers in four states there should be tribal affairs minister that i have already spoken about so next is oath and responsibility so what is the oath it is similar to chief minister to bear true faith and allegiance in the constitution to uphold the sovereignty and integrity of india to faithfully execute the office and to do right things without fear or favor affection or ill will you have to buy at these oaths all the oaths so what is the responsibility of council of ministers collective responsibility individual responsibility and no legal responsibility collectively responsibility means article 164 every one of them are collectively togetherly they are responsible to the state legislature they are answerable to the state legislature for all the acts if the state legislature passes no confidence motion they have to collectively resign next is individual responsibility individual responsibility means what each minister holds office during the pleasure of governor article 163 individual responsibility so when the governor is displeased so when get when does the governor gets displeased when the council of when the chief minister says remove that particular minister then the governor gets displeased so he, he that is that speaks of the that speaks of the individual responsibility okay next is no legal responsibility this is similar to what this is similar to your central a council of ministers no legal responsibility that is whatever the acts whatever the orders that the ministers make they are not legally responsible it is the entire the entire council of ministers are it is the government it is the state which is responsible it is not the individual who is responsible suppose let's say there is a uh, so suppose let's say uh, the agriculture minister agriculture minister forms the or signs a for order on msp order on msp so if there is something wrong in that order he is not legally responsible it is the state or the government together which is responsible he cannot be held individually uh, responsible okay next is composition of council of ministers similar to the state level we have what cabinet ministers we have council of uh, cabinet ministers ministers of state who are attached to cabinet ministers and also ministers of state with individual responsibility and also we have deputy ministers and the last category is parliamentary secretaries so we don't have parliamentary secretaries at the state level it ends at the level of deputy ministers so what is so now comes the concept of cabinet you know what is cabinet when we spoke about parliament it is the highest decision making authority chief for policy formulating body these are the certain uh, qualities or the features of the cabinet okay so we'll now we'll speak about what cabinet committees also in brief so i similar to the state le central level we have state level cabinet committees two types of committees ad hoc committee permanent standing committee ad hoc temporary standing permanent okay so they are set up set up by the whom chief minister sets it up on the day, on the basis of necessity okay okay what are the articles articles is article 163 164 and 167 next 
we will move into the chapter most important chapter at the state level that is state legislature right state legislature okay so now we spoke about parliament at the central level right similarly we have state legislature at the state level state legislature i already told there are two varieties one is exclusive legislative assemblies and there are states where there are legislative assembly plus legislative council this is limited in number 6 or 5 so after jammu kashmir was so jammu kashmir also had legislative council i think it was abolished right so so now there are only six states which have the state legislative assembly yes which are the states which are, sorry legislative councils which are the six states it is important from prelims perspective it is karnataka maharashtra andhra telangana up bihar you can remember in this pattern see karnataka and maharashtra have border andhra and tamil nadu have border up and bihar have border you can remember in this fashion that these are the six states which have legislative councils upper house okay so this comes under article 6 article 6 uh, sorry part 6 and articles which are the articles article 168 and up to 212 article 168 up to 212 speaks about state legislature okay okay so when it comes to le state legislative council how are they formed this time means there was a question with respect to state legislative council is it really necessary so that was the uh, context the broad context of the question right so presently there are 22 states that have unicameral unicameral cameral means what only legislative assembly bicameral means this unicameral legislature okay the legislative councils are called as vidhana parishad legislative councils are vidhana parishad legislative assemblies are called vidhan sabha similar name nomenclature even in karnataka vidhan parishad and vidhan sabha so which article speaks about the formation of legislative council article 169 so under article 169 state government can pass a resolution saying that they want a legislative council so then it goes to what it goes to central parliament the parliament uh, parliament can pass a bill constitute so there has to be a constitutional amendment bill so the constitutional amendment bill passed by simple majority simple majority if the constitutional amendment bill is passed then that particular state gets a state legislative council okay so composition of two uh, organization of state legislature so i already spoke about organization of state legislature that is legislative council and legislative assembly that is with respect to organization next is composition of two houses composition of vidhan sabha composition of vidhan parishad what is the composition okay composition of assembly that is vidhan sabha we are going to speak about vidhan sabha first strength so the maximum strength is constitutionally fixed at 500 we cannot exceed the number of 500 so the highest number is have is having in which state which state has the highest number of legislative seats it is uttar pradesh with 403 seats 403 mlas okay karnataka is as just less than uh, sorry uh, approximately half of U up up is a big state okay so the minimum strength of legislative assembly is what it is 60 so maximum is how much 500 minimum is 50, 60 so there are certain special cases in the case of arunachal pradesh sikkim and goa sikkim 
Sikkim, Goa, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh. In these three categories, in these three categories, the minimum strength can be 30 because there the population is less. So, in case of Mizoram, it can be 40. Minimum strength is 40. And in case of Nagaland, it is 46. Nominated members. So, nominated members, the Anglo-Indian community nomination can be done. However, this was removed by recent amendment act in the constitution. No more representation for Anglo-Indians either in parliament or in state legislature. Okay. Next is territorial constituencies. Territorial constituencies. So, what is territorial constituency? Similar to the state government. So, it is similar to the parliament. Parliament is divided into MP constituencies. State uh, Legislative Assembly is uh, divided into divided into what constituencies? Into MLA constituencies. Sorry for the map. I believe this is Karnataka map. So in Karnataka there are so many taluks. How many taluks? So we have 30 districts. So there are so many individual districts. So there are so many taluks, right? So each taluk is a, a MLA constituency. So taluk per se need not be a constituency, but major cases taluk taluk a particular taluk forms a MLA constituency. Who for demarcates it? It is the delimitation commission. I have already spoken what is delimitation commission. Okay. Readjustment after each census. After each census, once in a decade, the readjustment of seats, that is uh, demarcation of constituencies, take place, right? So, what is the readjustment? Total number of seats in the assembly of each state and also division of each state into territorial constituencies. That is, suppose Karnataka now has 224 seat. So, after each census, this number can be increased or decreased. And also, uh, we have demarcation of constituencies. That also uh, varies after, uh, after each census based on population. Okay. So, right now, until 2006, we have, uh, we have seized or we have locked that no changes in the constituencies. From 1976, there is no change in the constituencies. So, reservation of seats for SCs and STs, you know, we have reserved constituencies for the deprived sections. SCs and STs have their own constituencies which get rotated, rotated among the constituencies. So, in those constituencies, only the members from SC community or SC community, ST community can contest the election. No other member can contest. Why it is done? It is done to politically empower the, those communities. Right? This is with respect to composition of assembly. So, next comes composition of council. Only six states have council. Right? So, the membership strength of the council is fixed at one third of the one third of the state legislative assembly strength. So, Karnataka has how much? 224 members in the legislative assembly, right? So, legislative council is one third of this. That is 224 divided by 3. That is approximately approximately 75 seats, okay? In the Karnataka legislative council. So, in the legislative council, um, the minimum strength, minimum strength is fixed at 40 in the constitution. Maximum strength is not fixed. It is one third of the, one third of state legislative assembly strength. So, how the election takes place to legislative council? So, it is, it is given in the constitution. So, one third, one third of the members of council comes from local bodies. Local bodies means what? Municipalities and panchayats. So, from panchayats, we get, from panchayats, we get uh, one third of the members, panchayats and municipalities. I am going to discuss it later on. Panchayats and district boards from the there. 
so it is indirect election these municipality members and also district board members elect the one third members of the state legislative council one by twelfth are elected by graduates suppose you are a graduate you can enroll as a enroll as a voter for graduate constituency you can become a mlc next is one third one by twelfth one by twelfth are elected by teachers so teachers can also uh, enroll as voters for enroll for voters uh, voters for teachers constituency okay next is one third are elected by mlas that is members of Legi vidhan sabha vidhan sabha they can elect one third of members so the remainder so whatever the remaining is there that is uh, that is how much okay that is uh, nominated that is one sixth one sixth is nominated by the governor okay duration of the two houses so this is five years this is no duration this is a permanent house however members has six years of tenure similar to Rajya Sabha right so so the duration of legislative assembly is how much five years right okay so it can be terminated before if the government falls if the majority is uh, not there okay so if there is if the government falls if the assembly is dissolved the re-election should be held within six months re-election should be held within how many days within six months next is duration of council so it is similarly to Rajya Sabha it is uh, it is uh, six years for the members and it is a permanent house so permanent house it is not subject to dissolution membership of state legislature what are the qualification disqualification oath and other things so qualification you must be a citizen of India you must subscribe to a oath oath what is the oath to uphold the integrity and unity uh, sovereignty and integrity of India and to bear true faith and allegiance in the constitution so with respect to council if he has to become a legislative council member he must be 32 to 30 years if he has to become a legislative assembly member he has to be 25 years next is uh, he must possess other qualifications or where these other qualifications are given it is given in representation of people act 1951 it has given the other qualifications what are the other qualification so a person uh, getting elected to legislative council must be the resident of the particular state suppose a person is elected getting elected to legislative council of the karnataka legislature karnataka legislature then he must be a elector of karnataka okay next is okay even uh, if a person has to be elected as a legislative assembly member he must be uh, a member he must be a voter in the particular state similar to the council so if a cst constituencies only those communities can contest disqualification what disqualification so failing to submit the accounts and also uh, if he is of unsound mind similar to parliament so Office of Profit, disqualified, unsound mind, disqualified, undischarged, insolvent means one is one has incurred debt and has failed to fail to clear the debts. He is disqualified. So if once gives up the citizenship of India, then he is disqualified. So and also if he is disqualified by any other law, what is the other law? RPA. So whatever the conditions I told now till now, it is given in the constitution assembly in the constitution so the rest of the disqualification conditions is given where it is given in the uh, representation of people act okay so what are the other conditions one is if one is convicted of corruption disqualified so if he is imprisoned for two or more years disqualified you know the famous case of Jailalita ji and also uh, if he has failed to submit the electoral expenses electoral expenses if he has failed then also disqualified 
if he is uh, interested in any government contacts, which most of them are interested, then also disqualified. Okay. Next is if he is a if he is dismissed from government service for corruption, then also disqualified. And if he if he promotes enmity between different communities, for example, if someone promotes enmity between Hindus and Muslims, and if he is convicted for that, he is disqualified. So apart from this, we have the condition for disqualification on the grounds of defection. So defection means what? Similar to the uh, go and watch the video on parliament there I have described what is the condition for disqualification under defection. If a person I am going to briefly tell if a person voluntarily gives up the membership of the party on which he is elected and also if a independent member joins a party after getting elected or a nominated member gets elected uh, get, uh, get joins a party after 6 months and also if a person does not pa follow party directions with respect to voting then also it is qualified under uh, uh, under anti defection law 1985 Rajiv Gandhi ji bought this law ok oath or affirmation what is the oath so the oath is different from uh, council of ministers first is to bear true faith and allegiance this is uh, allegiance to constitution this is similar to everyone Next is to uphold sovereignty and integrity. This is also similar. So, the third is to faithfully discharge the office. Whatever office you are entering, you have to faith, be faithfully do the duties, doing the duties. That is the third, uh, 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 this thing. Oath or affirmation. Done. Okay. Next is vacation of seats. When does the seats get vacated? Double membership. So, if a member is, if a person is member of both council, parishad and sabha, so, then is one of the, his seats in one of the houses falls vacant. Next is disqualification. So, if he subject any disqualification, the seats fail vacant, falls vacant. If he resigns, the seats, seat falls vacant. If he is absent from the proceedings of the house for 60 days, disqualified, I mean vacant. And there are other cases also. Presiding office of the next is okay. Vacation is done. Next is the most important presiding officers of the state legislature, speaker of assembly, speaker of assembly. Okay, the speaker is elected by whom? Elected by the members of the state, uh, state legislature among themselves. Okay, so. Uh, suppose there are 224 members, there are 224 members in Karnataka Legislative Assembly, they elect a speaker from one member from among themselves as a speaker. Okay, next is, so when he ceases to be a member, when does he cease to be a member of the, sorry, when does the speaker ceases to hold his office, when does the speaker ceases to hold his office? So, if he is not a member of the state legislative assembly, if he is not a member of state legislative assembly, then he ceases to hold the office of speaker. If he is re removed by the resolution, so if the resolution is passed to remove him, then also he ceases to hold office. Then also if he resigns, if he resigns, then also he uh, he ceases to be a speaker. So, who is the present speaker of Karnataka Legislative Assembly? It is Sri Vishweshwara Egde Kageri, sir. Okay. So, what are the speaker speaker's powers? So, he maintains the order and decorum. Order, that is, the house is conducted orderly. Do they conduct it orderly? They throw chairs, remove shirts, shout, throw slippers, everything they do. So, to, to ensure that all those nonsensical things doesn't happen, whose function it is? It is the speaker. So, he is the final interpreter of the constitution and rules of procedure. So, constitution and rules of procedure, who interprets finally in the house? It is the speaker. Next is, he adjourns the house in the absence of quorum. So, you know what is a quorum. When the quorum, that is 10 per, less than 10% of the members are present, then the speaker adjourns the house. Okay. 
So similar to the Lok Sabha speaker, he does not vote in first instance. However, tying of votes, that is equal votes. So he does a cast, he does a casting vote. Exercise as a casting vote. So he can hold a secret sitting. So secret sitting. So rest of the provisions are similar to the provisions of the central speaker. What is the role of deputy speaker? So whenever the speaker office, speaker is not there. Deputy speaker chairs the assembly meeting. So he is, he is a, not a subordinate office. It is a separate office. So he is elected by among the members by themselves. Okay. So how how is the speaker removed at the state leg uh, state legislative assembly? It is by effective majority. What is effective majority? So Karnataka has 224 members. You know this. Half of this is 112. 112. So simple majority is simple majority is different from effective majority. Simple majority is the number of persons present and voting. On that day, how many persons are present? Among the present members who are all voting, only that is taken into account in simple majority. However, effective majority means it is half of the total, total number plus one. That is if 113 members vote, then the speaker stands, the speaker loses the seat. Okay. This is all regarding the deputy. So, with respect to deputy speaker, he performs the office, uh, he performs the duties of speaker's office when it is vacant. Okay. So, similar to Lok Sabha's panel of uh, chair, uh, panel of chairpersons, that is panel of speakers, uh, here also there is a panel of chairman, panel of chairman who can chair the council when both of them are absent, both speaker and deputy speaker are absent. Next is chairman of the council. So, here we don't have the office of vice president, we don't have the office of vice governor who can chair the state legislative council. So, what happens? Here, uh, here similar to speaker, he is elected, he is elected, he or she is elected by the council members themselves. They themselves elect the, uh, elect the chairman. So, he has the power similar to speaker. He has the power similar to speaker. However, in certain cases, speaker has more power similar like money bill. Who can decide? Only the speaker can decide. So, similar to governor, there is a office of deputy, similar to chairman, there is a office of deputy chairman of the council, deputy chairman. So, he chairs the uh, council when the speaker, when the chairman is absent or vacant, the seat is vacant. Okay, similar to panel of vice chairman, here also, uh, Panel of chairman he, in the similar to uh, central level that is uh, the vice president who is also chairman of Rajya Sabha and there is a deputy chairman. So similarly they appoint a panel of vice, vice chairman. Similarly here also vice chairman is appointed. They chair when both of them that is chairman and vice chairman are absent. Okay. So sessions of state legislature. How the sessions of state legislature is carried out. It is similar to uh, parliament, right? So, summoning. Who summons it? Who summons it? The governor summons the session. Upon whose advice? It is a, upon the chief minister's advice. Adjournment. Who does the adjournment? You know what is adjournment? That is temporary ending of, ending of the that day's session, that day's meeting. So, suppose this class, this class I am going to end after say let's say half an hour or 45 minutes. So that is the end of this particular uh, meeting. However, when I end the entire course, that is prorogation, that is prorogation, that is the ending of the entire this session, that is the ending of this entire course, that is called prorogation. However, I end this class after 45 minutes, that is adjournment. Hope you understand. Next is the concept of prorogation. I already explained. That is who prorogues? It is the it is the governor who prorogues. However, who does the adjournment? Adjournment is done by the speaker or chairman in the case of uh, in the case of uh, state legislative assembly and council respectively.
dissolution. So, this uh, Vidhan Parishad, that is upper house, is not subject to dissolution because it is a permanent house. However, lower house, Vidhan Sabha, is subject to dissolution. How dissolution is carried out? So, the uh, chief minister can ask the the chief minister can ask the governor to dissolve the house. Also, it is dissolved when upon the completion of how many years? Five years. Okay. So, when dissolution of happens, what uh, what about the bills that are pending? We discussed this uh, chap this concept even in the parliament chapter. So, a bill pending in the assembly, a bill pending in the Vidhan Sabha lapses when the, once the dissolution takes place. So, a bill pen, passed by the assembly, a bill is passed by the uh, Vidhan Sabha but is pending in the Vidhan Parishad that is also lapses. But there are three bills, there are three bills where uh, the lapse does not happen. So, a bill pending in the council itself, Parishad itself, a bill, a bill is pending, it does not lapse. A bill passed by the assembly uh, or passed by the houses, and but uh, pending the assent of the governor, governor, so it has been passed by both the houses or a single house in case of unicameral, unicameral legislature. So, it is the governor's assent is pending, then the bill does not lapse. Then, also, a bill passed by the assembly or passed by both the states but is returned by the president for reconsideration, returned by president or the governor for reconsideration, that, is, that bill also does not lapse. So, however, in the, what is the difference between the bills, lapsing, lapsing of bills between the, um, between the state legislative assembly and parliament, there uh, the same provisions whatever I told is applicable there plus one there what is that plus one there if the president has allowed for joint sitting then the bill does not lapse however state legislative assembly there is no provision of joint sitting very very important state legislative assembly there is no provision of there is no provision of holding joint sitting ok next is quorum quorum you already know it is uh, one tenth, so two twenty four members. If the assembly present a uh, number of members present is twenty two or less, then quorum is not there, so the session is not held. Next is voting in the house. How voting happens in the house? You know the eyes and nose in the president in the parliament. Similarly, uh, in uh, similarly. Uh, it happens in the uh, state legislative assembly also. Okay, next is uh, language. What is the language used in the state legislature with respect to parliament? It is Hindi and English. In the state legislative uh, legislature, it is the official language of the state. For example, Karnataka has which language has the state official language? Kannada. And it might be the official language of the state or in the or English. So, in the English or or the official language of the state stands as the uh, language of the state legislative assembly or council. Okay. Rights of ministers and advocate general. So, you know, uh, if, the mem if a minister is from legislative council, he can sit in the assembly debates but not vote. Even the advocate general similar to attorney general at the central level can sit in the assembly or council however without voting. Okay. So, next we are going to move towards legislative procedure in the state assembly. So, similar to the parliament. So, ordinary bills. Ordinary bills means which is not money bill or a constitutional amendment bill. Okay. So, here in the state legislature, there is no provision of introducing the constitution as amendment bill. Okay. Bill in the originating, sorry, ordinary bills. So, when a bill is taken up by either the assembly, either the parishad or the sabha. So, Vidhan Parishad or Vidhan Sabha, either the assembly or the council. So, what happens? It goes through three reading. 
So, a bill, such a bill can be introduced either by a minister or a private member. It goes through three readings, right? So, similar to the uh, central level. So, first reading, general discussion. First reading, the bill is just tabled. Second reading, detailed discussion. Thereafter, it goes to the, uh, no, no. Uh, first reading, uh, pre presenting. Second uh, reading, after that, it goes to the committee. Then comes back from committee. Second reading happens. Then after the second reading, third reading, uh, either the bill is accepted or rejected. Eyes or nose. Okay, so after this, once the bill is passed by the first, uh, either the assembly or the council, it is sent to the second house. Second house means either the upper house or second, the second house with respect to the originating house. So there also it goes through three readings. Why so many readings? Three plus three, six readings. Because uh, of detailed deliberation. Detailed deliberation means detailed discussion has to take place before a bill has to be passed. So that there is no no uh, wrong, there is no wrong in the bill. So, bill in the second house. So, after the bill is second house, it is presented to the governor. Governor, what can he do? He can assent, he can withhold, he can, he can return or he can reserve it for the president. President's assent. Okay. So, with respect to the council, there is uh, Certain uh, there is a difference. So there are only six states which have council. So there are certain special provisions with when it comes to the council. What is the special provision? So once the assembly passes the bill and sends to the council, if the council if the council passes the bill without any amendment or accepts the or the assembly accepts the amendment, then the bill is deemed to be passed. However, if the, uh, uh, if the assembly rejects the amendment, amendment, so council suppose let's say has made an amendment or the council does rejects the bill altogether, then there is a deadlock. How the deadlock is resolved at the state level? How the deadlock is resolved? So, here, uh, if the council rejects the bill or passes the bill with amendments, not accept to the assembly, so, uh, okay, here one provision is there. If the assembly rejects the amendment suggested by the council, so bill is passed by the assembly first. It goes to the council. Council adds certain amendments and sends it back to assembly or it rejects the bill altogether. Two, pro two options. If it rejects the bill or sends it, sends it back to assembly with some amendments. So, if the uh, if it uh, rejects the bill or uh, if it if the, the uh, rejects uh, if the uh, if the assembly rejects the amendment so they the council might reject the bill altogether or send to the assembly with some amendments if the assembly also rejects those amendments so then deadlock happens so then there is a waiting period of 3 months so assembly gives 3 months to the Council within three months you have to pass the bill. So within if after the three months lapse, if the council rejects the bill again, if the council rejects the bill again or uh, passes the bill with amendment, so if again they reject the bill or again they add the amendment which is not acceptable to the assembly, then within one month if they do not pass the bill, then the state assembly can repass the bill again then state assembly can override the council this is the very important word override the council that is first instance three months waiting period is given for the council to pass the bill so if they don't pass it within three months then one more month is given even in that one month also they don't pass then assembly overrides the council so assemblies will is made to be uh, overpowering over the council. This is not similar with respect to the Lok Sabha. Lok Sabha cannot override the, cannot override the Rajya Sabha, right? So, therefore, the ultimate power of pa passing an ordinary bill lies with whom? It lies with the State Legislative Assembly. Okay. 
So next is next comes the stage of ascent of governor. So later on, as governor may ascend, he may reserve it uh, to the uh, presidential ascent. So what the president do? He may ascend the bill. He may reject. He may withhold the bill. He may return the bill. So similar ascent of the president. If he ascends, it becomes a act. So then money bills also also there. So money bill Lok Sabha has overpowering overpowering. uh or powering criteria there if the if the rajya sabha doesn't pass the money bill within 14 days what happens the lok sabha will pass it again and give it to president for assent similarly similarly so in the only money bill they have overpowering here legislative assembly even ordinary bill four months they can overpower money bill 14 days they can overpower similar to parliament okay money bill is introduced money bill cannot be introduced in uh, legislative council similar to central level so so money bill is passed by legislative assembly it is given to the council for assent if the council doesn't do anything or rejects or amends then they cannot amend if they reject or doesn't do anything after 14 days after 14 days uh, what what they do so after 14 days the bill is deemed to be passed by both the assembly and council 14 days happens council doesn't do anything then the bill is money bill is deemed to be passed by both of them so at the max they can hold it for 14 days that's all okay so uh, it is present to the governor governor can uh, governor can uh, give his assent or we told he cannot return or he may save it to presidential assent okay next is uh, comparison with parliament parliament comparison ordinary bill money bill what are the comparison so my ordinary bill can be uh, in the parliament can be introduced both the houses legislature uh, legislature both the houses it can be introduced so ordinary bill parliament it can be introduced by a minister or private member similar in the state so in the ordinary bill uh, it passes through three readings here also three readings so uh, it is deemed to be passed when both the houses pass it where here it is deemed to be passed when state legislature uh, passes it uh, when the state legislature when the both both the houses have agreed agreed to the bill okay so it is deemed to be passed when both the houses are have passed it in the parliament here also if both the houses are passing the bill then it is deemed to be passed however in the case of deadlock sent uh, parliament there is a provision of deadlock uh, provision of joint sitting here there is no provision of joint sitting why because they can override after four months there is a provision of four months 3 plus 1 okay so this is with respect to ordinary bill money bill what is the difference cannot be introduced in rajya sabha with respect to parliament here also cannot be introduced in council so here it is introduced by parliament introduced by presidential recommendation here governor's recommendation so only the minister can introduce here also minister can be only the minister can introduce so here only the, the rajya sabha can hold it for 14 days here also 14 days similarly there are many differences given in your book lakshmi ka you can go go through next is position of legislative council what is the position of will equal and unequal however rajya sabha is equal unequal and more equal that is uh, has more power than uh, lok sabha which where all more power when all india services have to be formed and when the constitution has to form constitution has to form a bill with respect to a state list uh, with respect to state list there they have overpower so equal with assembly where, where does the legislative council has equal powers with assembly first is uh, with respect to ordinary bills ordinary bills council has equal power approval of ordinances it has equal power both of them have to approve next is selection of ministers can be done in both from both the houses and also so these are the areas where they have equal powers 
Next is unequal with assembly. Where does the where does the council has unequal powers with the assembly? Okay, money bill only assembly can take a call. Council cannot do anything. So council what they can do? Get the max. They can hold it for fourteen days. So next is. Uh, Money bill or not can be decided only by the speaker, chairman of council doesn't have any power. So ordinary bill, final power lies with whom? With the assembly only. They can hold it only for 4 plus 1 month. So uh, council cannot vote for budget of budget uh, demand for grants. Assembly can vote for uh, demand for grants. So Council cannot remove the council cannot remove the council of ministers. Legislative council cannot remove the council of ministers. They cannot pass the no confidence motion. Legislative assembly can pass the no confidence motion. Similarly, there are many other unequal provisions with the assembly you can look into. Okay. So, what is the difference between Rajya Sabha and Legislative Council? So, Rajya Sabha is a representative representation of states. However, it is a dilatory body. Dilatory body. So, here there is no concept of representation of states. When it comes to council. So, council represents heterogeneous interests. It has teachers, it has graduates, it has district members, it has legislative member, legislative elected members and also nominated members. So, why council is needed? It, it permeates democracy. It increases the democratical principles. So, more representation. It, it checks the hasty and defective, hasty and defective laws. Suppose, legislative assembly, out of their, out of their uh, majority, they pass certain bills. So, if it is hasty or it is defective, then the council can tame it. Also, council provides an option for choosing of ministers. We can choose the ministers from legislative council. It provides, also it provides uh, scope for representation of eminent people. Okay, privileges. Just like, just like parliamentary privileges, we have state legislative privileges. What are the privileges? State legislature. So, here parliamentary privileges, article 105 is important. State legislative privileges, Article 194 is important. So, privileges of state legislature are a sum of special rights, immunities and exceptions enjoyed by the house. Sum of special rights, immunities and exceptions enjoyed by the house as a total and also individual members. Okay, what are the collective privileges? Collective privileges, similar to parliament, they can publish the reports, they can exclude strangers from its proceedings, it can make rules for its regulating its own procedure, that is, how the house is run on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, regulating the procedure, all those things, the, and it can also punish the members for breach of privilege and contempt of the house. These are collective privileges. Individual privileges, similar to parliament, cannot be arrested 40 days before and 40 days after the session, uh, with only with respect to civil cases. They have freedom of speech, they can speak whatever they want, that is why they do all this shouting and all. No court can do anything. So, they are exempted from jury service, the court cannot call them to give evidence in any case during the session is being held. Okay. So, strength of these are collective privileges and individual privileges. Strength of assembly and council. What are the strength of assembly and council? So, uh, we have different strengths. So, highest strength is what? Uttar Pradesh, I already told you. 403, 403 seats. Lowest strength is which state? We have two states. Tripura has 60 states, 60 MLAs. Arunachal Pradesh has 60 MLAs. Even, sorry, Mizoram has 40 MLAs. Even Goa has 40 MLAs. So, 40 MLAs is the minimum number. With respect to union territories, it is the Puducherry. Puducherry Union Territory has 30 MLAs, the least. Okay, what are the articles? 
articles so the articles start from with respect to state legislative assembly the articles start from 168 and goes up to 191 sorry 213 so it is divided into uh, so the officers officers of state legislature speaker article 178 speak uh, speaks about the office of speaker and deputy speaker chairman and deputy chairman article 182 okay next is so privileges i already told you 194 article 194 and article 200 speaks about assent of bills article 199 speaks about money bill so money bill central level is spoken about by article 110 state level 199 okay next is Article two not two speaks about annual financial statement. That is state budget two not two, central budget one twelve, one twelve two not two, state budget, central budget and state budget. Okay. So, so with respect to state legislature, legislature, this is what this is what it is all about. Next, we will speak about. the high court so every state has a high court does every state has a high court no so we have 25 high courts today only we have 28 states but 25 high courts so even uh, that excludes the delhi high court delhi high court delhi is the only union territory which has a high court for itself own high court so there are 24 states which have their own high court so chandigarh high court is common between high court uh, the state of haryana and punjab okay high court indian indian constitution envisaged what it envisaged a single integrated judiciary indian constitution envisaged a single integrated judiciary so when did this uh, Uh, concept of high court originate in india it originated in 1862 1862 three high courts were formed three high courts the date is important 1862 what are the three high courts kolkata bombay and madras these three high courts were formed uh, this was the first instance of high court so the constitution of india that is states reorganization act after the states reorganization act was made and seventh schedule which uh, sorry seventh amendment act so uh, with respect to organizing the states reorganizing the states which is the amendment act it is the seventh amendment act that act speaks about every state every state as a uh, high court it also it also gives provision for common high court for two or more states or two or more states and a union territory at present there are 25 high courts okay what is the composition and appointment composition and appointment every co high court consists of a chief justice and other judges okay appointment of the judges how Uh, the so the judges of appoint uh, high court are appointed by, is it appointed by the governor please be careful judges of high court whether it is a normal judge or a cja he is appointed by the president not by the governor please be careful you get confused in the preliminary examinations okay so the, chief, the judges of a high court are appointed by the president and the chief justice the chief justice of the i court is appointed by the president in consultation with the governor so normal judges no need of consultation of governor cji sorry not cji cjs chief justice of the state can be appointed only with the consultation of the governor okay so the president consults the governor so second judges states so second judges case i spoke about second judges case when is it 1993 third judges case 1997 fourth judges case 2015 so the second judges case says that no appointment 
uh, Supreme Court ruled that no appointment of a judge of High Court can be made unless it is in conformity with the opinion of Chief Justice of India. That is, the judge, that is, the judges, High Court judges can be appointed only when the opinion of CJI is taken. In the third judge's case, it said that uh, not only third judge's case, it expanded. It expanded the provision saying that not only the uh, consent of the uh, CJI, but two more senior most judges. So, with respect to SC Collegium, SC Collegium, we have CJI plus 4. With respect to High Court judges, it is CJI plus 2 senior most judges. Please note the difference. You will be confused. Okay. So, 99th Amendment Act, you know what it is, NJAC, it had the provision for appointment of judges by, even by the executive had its say, however, it was held invalid. So, what are the qualifications and, sorry, what are the qualifications and oath? So, he should be a citizen of India, that is the first qualification. Next is, he should have held a judicial office. He should have held a judicial office for 10 years in the territory of India, within the boundary of India. He should have held a judicial office for 10 years. Next is, or he has to be an advocate of, advocate of high court for 10 years. He should have been an advocate for high court for 10 years. So here, with respect to high court judges, there is no provision for appointing a Distinguished jurist. So, with respect to uh, Supreme Court, Supreme Court has I court judge, I court lawyer, or uh, distinguished jurist can be appointed as a judge. Whereas in the in the case of I court judges, there is no provision of distinguished jurist. So he, this difference you have to uh, note. Oath and affirmation. What is the oath? Constitution to bear, bear true faith and allegiance. Uphold the sovereignty and integrity. Third is to do all the duty without favor or affection or ill will without fever or favor. Next is last provision to uphold the constitution whenever, whenever, sorry, whenever the, uh, whenever the oath of judges come to uphold the constitution comes up because only the judges can uphold the constitution, right? So, that gets added. Okay. Tenure, removal and transfer. Tenure, removal and transfer. So, tenure of judges. So, they hold office for 62 years. So, the judges, high court judges hold office for 62 years. Before that, they can resign. They can be removed. Removal procedure is similar to Supreme Court judges. So, that is the state legislature has no say. It is only the parliament which can remove the I court judges. So, or he can be and uh, he resigns. The, that is one case. And also he vacates his office when he is appointed as a Supreme Court judge. The seats fail or falls vacant when he gets appointed as a Supreme Court judge. These are the four conditions. Okay. Removal of judges. So, the president who removes, president removes. So, when does he remove? Not at his whims and fantasies. There, an address has to be presented by the parliament to remove uh, remove the judges. So, here you know that uh, removal, uh, so, there is a judges inquiry act. There is a judges inquiry act. So, what this act, was formulated in 1968. What does this act say? So, 100 members in the case of Lok Sabha or 50 members in the Rajya Sabha has to give a, has to sign a motion to start the removal of judges process. Then, they may admit, the speaker may admit or reject. Then, they constitute a 3 member. So, 3 member committee similar to SC judge removal. So, then, that committee uh, should consist of a CJI, Chief Justice of High Court, Distinguished Jurist. Then, so if they found the guilty of misbehavior or incapacity, then they advise the, then they advise the house to take up the issue. If they pass it by special majority, you know what is special majority? 
then the president can sign the order. So, transfer of judges, transfer, so when it comes to Supreme Court judges, there is no question of transfer because there is one, one, one Supreme Court. However, there are 25 Supreme Courts, there is a possibility of transfer of judges. So, there were issues in the recent past. What were the issues? One was the issue of transfer of Justice Murlidhar of Delhi High Court. One more, one was Justice Murlidhar. One more was the issue of uh, transfer of judge. The Madras High Court, Madras High Court Chief, Chief Justice, who? Justice Tamil Ramani or something. I don't remember the name. That was also ran into issue. So, the President can transfer a judge from one High Court to another High Court after consulting the CJI. And also, so, uh, CJI, so CJI, President consult the CJI in order to transfer the judge. So, so, in 1977, Supreme Court said that the transfer of judges has to be carried out, has to be carried out only as an exceptional measure, not as a punishment. However, today, the transfer of judges is mostly done as a punishment. So, in the third judges cases, when does the third judges cases take place? 1998, not, not 7, 7, 1998. In the third judges cases, the Supreme Court said, the transfer of judge, uh, the Supreme Court opined that in the case of transfer of High Court judges, the Chief Justice of India, so the President transfers, he transfers with respect in opinion, with the opinion of CJ. So what does the CJ do? Should he give his opinion on his own? No. He has to consult a collegium of four senior most judges of Supreme Court plus the Chief Justice of the two High Courts. So with respect to transfer, President does the transfer, President consults whom? CJ, CJ has to consult four Supreme Court judges plus two High Court CJ. Who are the two High Court CJ? One is the transferring court, another is the receiving court. Suppose Madras High Court is transferring, the CJ should consult Madras High Court, Madras High Court CJ, CJs. And you should also consult, suppose transfer is being turned to Meghalaya, he should consult the chief justice of state, uh, chief justice of the state of Meghalaya. So, the, after consulting three, these two chief justices, the uh, uh, CJ can recommend to the president after which he transfers. So, similar to uh, state, central level, we have acting additional and retired judges. What is acting judges? Acting chief justice. So, when the office of chief justice is vacant or is temporarily absent, then acting chief justice is nominated by the governor. Is it a governor? No, it is the president. Next is additional and acting judges. So not exit. So it is a temporary judges. Temporary judges for how many tenure? Two years. Two years is the tenure. So when does the when does the acting and additional judges can be done? It can be done when there is a temporary increase in the business, increase in the business of the house. So, when there is a temporary increase, then the transfer can be done. Sorry, the additional judges can be taken and also there is high work, high pendency of work. Okay, next is retired judges. So, whenever there is a high workload, the CJI, Chief Justice of a High Court, not, sorry, not CJI, Chief Justice of High Court can request a retired judge of a High Court to be to come and do the work. However, the Chief Justice of High Court must, must take the opinion of President before doing so. Okay, this is with respect to this section. Next is independence of High Court. How the independence of High Court is ensured? So, first is mode of appointment. The executive and the legislature doesn't have any say. It is only the, it is only the judges who appoint themselves. So, there is no we don't have any say. Right? Okay. Appointment, they ensure independence. Then security of tenure, they cannot be removed before 62 years. Fixed service condition, their salary cannot be diminished except during financial emergency. And their expenses are charged on Consolidated Fund of India. Charged expenditure. What is charged expenditure? Not subject to vote of parliament. So, and also... Conduct of judges cannot be discussed in the 
state legislature whatever the judges do that should not be discussed in the state legislature whatever the uh, legislatures that is mlsp that cannot be discussed by the court so there is mutual exclusion win win situation okay so also after uh, after retirement the judges are banned from practice they cannot practice so with re okay so in the case of high court suppose a person is a uh, judge of karnataka high court he is banned from practice within the state of karnataka but not outside he can practice in front of supreme court he can practice in any other high court however in the case of supreme court judges all india they cannot practice so uh, the court has uh, independence is ensured through power to punish for its contempt contempt for court power for punishment so they can appoint their own staff the uh, high court jurisdiction cannot be curtailed however it can be increased and also uh, the separation from executive is ensured there is clear separation of powers so jurisdiction and powers of the high court jurisdiction and powers of the high court what are the jurisdictions okay so what are the jurisdictions so similar jurisdiction to the supreme court jurisdiction i mean the provisions are same however the territory is different okay so the constitution does not give the jurisdiction the constitution just says what does it say the jurisdiction is similar to what it was before the commencement of constitution that is constitution commenced on 26 january on 25 january what was the provisions it shall continue that is what the constitution has said okay there are seven jurisdictions first is original jurisdiction what is the origin you know the original jurisdiction of supreme court what it is it is with respect to center state or state state quarrel 131 with respect to original jurisdiction of high court what are the matters so matters of admiralty and contempt of court contempt of court admiralty directly you can go to uh, you can go to high court dispute related to mp or mla election directly go to high court so any revenue matter revenue matter original jurisdiction enforcement of fundamental rights directly you can go to high court so and also so constitutional matters constitutional matters you can directly go to high court from the subordinate court writ jurisdiction writ jurisdiction is spoken about by article 226 what does so you know the writs certiorari mandamus habeas corpus qo warranto and so forth prohibition so so, so supreme court writ jurisdiction is lesser than high court writ jurisdiction the high supreme court can issue writs only for only for the enforcement of fundamental rights however the high court can issue the writs for any other purpose not only for the uh, not only for the Uh, for for the fundamental rights that is why the jurisdiction is higher okay appellate jurisdiction appellate means going for appeal from subordinate courts to high court okay what is the appellate jurisdiction with respect to civil matters civil matters that is money when 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 which it is civil disputes among the people one does not one does which does not involve crime so civil matters so civil matters where does the in what cases the appeal lies first appeal appeals from the order and judgments of district courts district courts directly you can go to i court appellate jurisdiction second appeals from the orders of the even first appeals and also second appeals so first appeal second appeal you can go so first appeal means direct if the court is case is filed in the district court first appeal lies to lies to where high court second appeal means it is uh, filed in some taluk court taluk court to district court first appeal district court to high court second appeal so 
year one provision is there. Calcutta, Bombay and Madras High Court has in inter-court appeal. Inter-court appeal means what? So, if a single judge bench has given a, if a single judge bench has given a judgment, only these, in these three high courts, you can, uh, you can appeal in the same high court. In the same high court, you can appeal before a larger bench. Okay. So, administrative and other tribunals, tribunals, you have Karnataka Administrative Tribunal and various other water tribunal and any other tribunal from the tribunals, direct appeal to High Court. Criminal matters, in the criminal matters, where, 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 where does the appeal lie? So, appeal from the, so in the, at the district level, you know, there is district court, so which deals with civil disputes. If it deals with Criminal disputes, it is called as sessions court. Criminal dispute, session court. Criminal dispute, session court. Remember this. Okay. So, appeals from the judgment of session court and additional session court lie to high court on when if the sentence is one of imprisonment of more than seven years. That is, if the uh, sentence, that is, sentence, if the person is sentenced for more than seven years, appeals, appeal lies to where? Appeal lies to High Court. Okay. So, also, some provisions of Criminal Procedure Code. When was the Criminal Procedure, Procedure Code formed? 1973. It separated the executive from, executive from where? Judiciary. Earlier, executive and judiciary were combined. You had the office of district collector. He also used to exercise judicial judicial power so criminal procedure code separated so it is also given in article 50 of constitution separation of judiciary and executive okay so in some cases criminal procedure code appeals from uh, in certain specific cases appeals from metropolitan magistrate can also go to high court metropolitan magistrate metropolitan areas wherever metropolitan areas are there from there from courts in that, that area, appeal can go to high court only in certain specific cases. So, next is supervisory jurisdiction. So, what is supervisory jurisdiction? So, these court, high court, supervises over the subordinate courts. We have district courts, we have session courts, we have subordinate courts, taluk courts, munsip courts, JMFC courts, so many courts. Everything is supervised, is supervised by the, is supervised by whom? It is supervised by the High Court. So, how does the supervision is done? So, it calls for returns from them. Returns means how much money is spent. What is the uh, account that is that is called by the High Court. So, it makes the general rules, general rules and procedures for the lower courts. So, it also prescribes the form in which accounts has to be maintained, books has to be maintained. Okay. So, the power of superintendent of super, uh, high court is very broad because it extends to all courts in its jurisdiction, in, within the territory, under its control. Everywhere it extends. Okay. Next is control over subordinate courts. Supervisory jurisdiction is done, control over subordinate court. How the control is done? So, High Court is consulted by the Governor. When does the Governor consult High Court? They consult it during the appointment, appointment, promotion and transfer of district judges. Every uh, district has a district court, district judges, appointment and transfer. A governor consults whom? Governor consults High Court. So, so, Apart from, apart from the district judge, there are various judicial officers. What are the judicial officers? Subordinate judges, subordinate judges, uh, JMFC court judges, Munsip court judges. So, those judges uh, appointment is done uh, by the government upon consultation with high court and also state public service commission. So, uh, also... Uh, if a case is pending in the subordinate court and it involves a constitutional provision, de decoding of a constitutional provision, that co case can be taken up by the high court and placed among itself. It can uh, dispose it by itself. 
okay this is with respect to control over subordinate courts next is the a court of record what is a court of record so the judgments and proceedings of the high court are recorded for future reference so we have just like we refer the keshwan and the parthi case likewise we might refer mysore high court karnataka high court earlier court mysore high court mysore high court uh, as given definition with respect to secularism that we refer even today likewise uh, that is that acts as a court of record so court of record also means the court has a power to punish for contempt of court contempt of court is carried out the court has power to punish okay so contempt of court we have contempt of court act and also article 129 129 speaks about contempt of court what is a contempt it scandalizes or lowers the authority of court it prejudices or disrupts the judicial proceedings it interferes with the administration of justice there contempt of court happens however innocent publication of the day to day proceedings or uh, fair and fair and accurate report, uh, reporting of judicial proceedings does not account for contempt of court you know uh, journalist ravi belgere was jailed for contempt of what not contempt of court contempt of house so under which article article 194 next is the power of judicial review just like article 32 has power of judicial review we have article 22 226 gives power power of judicial review to whom it gives the power of judicial review to high court so judicial review means any judgment which has been done given earlier the court can review its own judgment later on also not only its own judgment even executive orders executive orders and also legislative acts can be re reviewed legislative acts and executive orders can be reviewed by the court later on okay so when can the when can when can the executive order legislative acts and its own judgments can be reviewed it can be reviewed in the case of infringement of fundamental rights and also uh, when the action is outside the authority of so suppose outside the authority which has framed it suppose uh, bbmp carries out a action bengaluru uh, uh, metro brot bengaluru managra palike which is a local body in the city of bengaluru it carries out a action if that action is outside its jurisdiction then we can file a judicial review okay and also if the action is against constitution then also we can uh, we can uh, uh, approach the court for judicial review okay next comes Uh, what are the names and uh, jurisdiction of high court we have so many courts alabad high court kolkata high court bombay high court so many high courts you just go through it what are the articles when it comes to high court so starting from article 214 article 214 and it goes up to article 232 article 232 we speak about article 214 to article 232 we speak about high court okay 214 is speaks about i courts per se okay so 215 speaks about i court court to be high court of record article 222 is important because it speaks about transfer of judge article 222 speaks about transfer of judge so this is all with respect to high courts tomorrow i am going to start with the concept of tribunals so thank you for bearing with me hope you found the class very useful because these are very very important concepts when it comes to indian polity direct questions can be expected so lakshmi kant is your soul and holy source so you just stick to lakshmi kant for polity you are going to ace the exams so all the best for all of you take care of your health good night and jai hind thank you